Hey guys, Slim Kirby here. I'm back for the end game of Let's Play Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Now, in this chapter, there are three fronts from which you can attack. The middle, which will uh, basically consist of you fighting General Bryce and several dragons, or just three actually. But you will have to fight a few dragons on this path. And then you also have to usually deal with some of the units in the north of this little stone structure place. Because there are quite a few paladins a little north of here. Uh, next you have the left and right areas. They're just random assortments of different enemies. Uh, there are two beast lagoos on both sides. Uh, tigers over here, cats on the other side. Not very hard to deal with though. Uh, for, this, uh, for this chapter I've sent Ike, Soren, and Nazar in the center structure area. Uh, the only reason I sent so few units up there is... I'm going to use Soren mostly for the bolting spell to weaken General Bryce and some of the dragons in the area. Uh, Nasser, Nasser actually packs quite a punch himself. And then of course Ike is virtually unstoppable right now with his stats. He is max level after all. And then I'll kind of just leave Mist in the area just in case uh, I need her to heal anybody with the physics staff. But yeah, not a very hard chapter. Just divide up your units, make sure you have some strong units in each party, and you should be fine. Nothing is terribly difficult about this chapter. Uh, general Bryce, he's obviously a general, as I mentioned already. He has the best lance in the game, the Wishblade. I don't know if you can steal it. If you can, I didn't use it at all, because uh, once you basically beat Bryce, like you should have all the dragons taken care of. And all the most of the units taken care of already, so really, you really don't need the wish blade very much. But it is the best lance in the game. I getting an Aether right here that definitely helped. Now, one thing I struggled with in this chapter is that General Bryce actually ran away in, uh, during the fight. Uh, he got to very low HP levels, and then he just kind of just darted away. Expect him to do that, though, because usually when an enemy like that gets low on HP, they'll try to run away and heal it. So yeah, all the units are basically moving forward. Now, right here is something you get to do. Uh, this is I was talking about this briefly in the last chapter, but you can actually call for reinforcements. And you can choose either Tabarn, Nesala, or Gifika. Uh, you know what Tabarn is by now. We've seen him fight in several chapters. And then, of course, uh, Nesala. We've seen him fight before in uh, Chapter 19. And then there's also Gifka. Gifka is a lion, and he's the only lion you can use in the game. He's very powerful, but personally, I'd prefer the birds. Or, I guess you could even say, personally, I prefer the air. <laughs> a little brawl reference right there. Personally, I prefer the air. But yeah, Tabarn will come on the third turn, I believe, and he'll help us out. He is a very good unit to use. I think he's probably the best unit to use for this chapter. Nasal is also pretty good, but I think he's in a slightly lower level. And then, I believe... I think Gifka is actually a pretty good unit as well. But I just prefer the air units, in my own opinion. Let's see, we got rid of the dragon with no problem, thank god. And I'll go ahead and use Nazar against General Bryce. I almost killed him right here, I almost killed him. And I probably could have even killed him if I sent Soren over, or if I didn't use the bolting spell already. But no, I made the stupid mistake of not killing him, and then he ran away like a little pansy. Now, right here is where I made a stupid mistake. A very stupid mistake. I accidentally used the Asherah Staff. Uh, what the Asherah Staff does is it heals everybody's HP, uh, even if they have... And it also heals a condition or status element. And it also gives you, basically, a free level up as well. Now, seeing how this is the first turn, or the second turn, nobody really had any damage. So that was basically... A wasted use of that weapon right there. However, the Asherah Staff, while being very excellent, isn't really that necessary. Uh, you should be able to beat all the units with no problem. 
Right there we saw Nephany activate Luna. Now I know I'm not going to be showing any of the animations. Because I think it would just add too much time to this video. Uh, speaking of which, this is going to be about six videos right here. Uh, there was the first intro video, then there will be like four videos of this battle. And then the final video should be me beating the boss and then covering uh, the after chapter dialogue. I won't cover the epilogue until tomorrow though. Uh, tomorrow, which will be Sunday. So yeah, that's what's happening with that. I'm, I'm just going to show you uh, everything up until, the ep up in, up until the epilogue. That's all I'm going to show you for right now. What is that? Oh, my controller. I felt a wire under my foot, and I was like, what is that? And it was my GameCube controller. But I didn't really have that much difficulty with this chapter. It's really not a hard chapter. Uh, during my second playthrough of this game, I had a lot of trouble, though. Mostly because I spammed Ike a lot, and then all my other units weren't very strong. And then I also didn't do very good with my skill equipping as well, so... I had a little trouble on my second attempt at this chapter. But, uh, this is like, I think the fifth or sixth time I've played through the game. So, it's not really that hard anymore. It's really just not difficult at all. You just have to be careful, keep your strongest units together and just attack each enemy force one at a time. And then when you get to the boss, that's when your biggest challenge occurs. But since uh, the boss doesn't move in this chapter, uh, you really don't have that much difficulty with the boss either. Uh, speaking of which, the boss, even though he doesn't move in this uh, a normal difficulty or easy difficulty, he does move in, uh, on hard. In fact, there's even a little bonus battle you have to do on hard mode. And I'll talk about that later on in, like, one of the extra videos. But you don't have to worry about him moving on normal mode, which is a good thing because he is a very powerful boss. Right here, just making sure Rolf is out of range and, um, Rice, for that matter. And then, I decided to go ahead and just, oh, I'm, I forgot to hit chant. So yeah, Bryce started to run away. Then he even got healed by this guy. He didn't get healed all the way, but he got healed enough to the point where he can just use the Vulnerary. And let's see, Boyd got attacked here pretty badly. I think this is actually the only time in the chapter where a unit was in almost critical condition, because I don't think anyone dropped to this low of HP, but thankfully Boyd had uh, his skills, so he was able to do extra damage to that beast. But he turned out to be fine for the rest of the chapter. I don't think I even had a unit in that much trouble um, since that point for the rest of the chapter. Now, one of the main my one of my main goals for this chapter is I want to try to use Gatri, Jill, Nephany, Zahark, and Kieran as much as possible because. I'm really going to try to make it so some of the units you get from the beginning of the game aren't in the top 5 MVP section of the epilogue. I think I've talked about this uh, throughout the game at uh, several random intervals, but throughout the game, of, in the history of me playing this game, there are three characters, sometimes even four characters, that are always in my top 5. Ike, Soren, Soren is the character that's sometimes always in my top 5. Boyd and Oscar. Those three people, in addition to Soren, are almost always in my top five. I have no idea why. I don't try to put them in my top five. I think it's just because I abuse them so much in the early chapters that I really don't want to see those guys in my final top five MVP section. Now, I've used Ike quite a bit, so if Ike is in there, I won't really care that much. But I'd like to see someone else besides Ike up there. Or besides Oscar and Boyd. Because usually I get them in the top 5 every time. I have no idea why. Because I always thought I used Kieran more than uh, Oscar. But I don't know. It's just something weird that always happens to me. So yeah, that's one of my main goals for the epilogue section of this game. Another one of my goals. This is kind of a joke goal, by the way. I want to make sure I finish this project before 141 videos. 
Yeah, uh, if anyone noticed, uh, during the week, or maybe it was even last weekend, I don't even remember, because they get so many channel comments that everything that gets posted on there is, like, gone within two days. But, uh, Shadow Mario 41 actually posted a comment where he talked about if I uh, make the extra videos, enough videos, then it'll be 141 videos exactly. And I am not going to give him the benefit of that. I am not going to have my project be in that many videos. Now, the extra videos, I don't think they'll take me eight videos because that's how many videos he predicted me doing for the extras in order to get that amount. But as I said in the last chapter, I'm not going to cover very much in the extras. I'm just going to cover weapon forging and some of the main menu options. And then some of the differences between hard and normal mode. And 